Be Wealthy and Smart, Episode 3. financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Hello and welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. This episode is called How to Get Rich. And I really thought, do I want to call it how to get rich? Maybe that sounds sort of like a get rich quick scheme or something, which I'm totally not about. But I also thought, you know, that's what it really is, because it's about the six steps to wealth that I studied millionaires, I researched millionaires, and I found and put together these six steps to wealth. And when I follow those, that's when I became a multimillionaire. So I thought, I do want to call this how to get rich because that's what it is. And in today's show, you're going to learn that first of the six steps to wealth. The first step is called creating a wealthy mindset. How you think about wealth becomes the foundation of how much wealth you do or don't have. So I want to help you get rid of any limiting beliefs that you might have. What you're going to learn today is that wealth is a decision. Our subconscious beliefs about wealth show up in our lives, and our thoughts impact and can change our reality. Since your thoughts create your life, to change your life, you need to change your thoughts. I'm going to warn you right up front, this is a metaphysical show with scientific evidence to back it up. No, it's not about the law of attraction or the secret, which in my opinion does not go far enough to be documented by science. What I'm talking about is faith. There's a biblical quote that says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. And that's really all I'm talking about is faith. In the study of wealth and my research about wealth, I came across Think and Grow Rich when I was very young. Think and Grow Rich was the most authoritative book we have on how to become wealthy because it was researched and it was it was interviews with real wealthy people, some of the wealthiest of our day who, you know, in history, who, um, who shared their thoughts and opinions about wealth and how they became wealthy. I talked about the mind's importance in the wealth creation process. And I like to take that to the next level and use modern science to explain how and why your thoughts create your reality. I put the six steps to wealth together when I was young by reading books about millionaires and how they made their wealth. And again, I saw that they all started with the first step being pretty much the same, and that was having a wealthy mindset, getting rid of limiting beliefs about money, and having that wealthy mindset because all wealth really begins in your mind, which is what I'm going to share with you today. How you think and what you believe about money is really important and will either work with you or work against you. Andrew Carnegie hired Napoleon Hill to write Think and Grow Rich and document all of these things. So we have this body of work that talks about how thoughts are things and thoughts become things. And we may not have had the scientific research at that time to back it up, but that's what I'm going to share with you today. And I find it so fascinating. So If you're not into the metaphysical and you don't want to listen to this, that's fine. You don't have to. But let me just tell you that if you don't listen to it, you're doing yourself a disservice because mindset is so important to wealth building. You can study all the stocks and bonds you want. You can study all the real estate. You can study all the different processes for building wealth. And as you'll see that you'll just be studying one of the steps to wealth. You'll not be incorporating all of them. And I want you to have that financial success. I want you to have that financial freedom. I want you to know all of the steps. So I'm going to share the first step to wealth as a wealthy mindset and show you the research and the science behind it as well. So that if you're not a believer in faith 
and you don't understand how important that is to life and to everything that you do, maybe through some of the scientific research, uh, you'll understand why it's so important. So again, this was not something I learned about on Wall Street. It's not something that I learned as a certified financial planner or in business school. But what you think about having money and people who have money is really key to whether or not you will have money. So think about what experiences have you had with wealthy people? Were they good experiences or were they bad experiences? Because you have had some thoughts and experiences and um, interactions with wealthy people that impact what you believe about wealth. So for example, when we're growing up, our parents have beliefs about money. Our parents have, you know, maybe had fights about money, or maybe they told us that money doesn't grow on trees. Or one of my clients told me that her dad, you know, didn't like wealthy people. And so when people in the neighborhood had nice cars, he would drive a truck just to be sort of anti-wealthy. And maybe it gave her a fear that if she became wealthy, she wouldn't have the love of her father. You know, there's all kinds of crazy things that can get into our subconscious about money. And what you see on television and in the movies is another thing that can really impact what you think about wealth. Because a lot of wealthy people are portrayed as the bad guy on television or the greedy one or the one that had to do something dishonest in order to become wealthy. And so maybe that colors our thoughts about wealth and we think that maybe wealthy people are all bad people. I was fortunate enough to grow up around wealthy people who were very generous and kind and giving. I also in my career worked with wealthy people who started foundations and I found to be very, very generous. So I actually have a very positive mindset around what wealthy people look like to me or how they seem to me. But you might not have had that experience. You might have had another terrible experience. You might have had a wealthy parent who withheld money from you and that gave you some some anger and bad feelings around money and power. So you know, the other thing is that fear plays into our thoughts about money because fear can be a very powerful emotion. And what we fear, we can focus on and cause to happen in our life. If your fear is to become a bag lady, you may be creating that to come true in your life. So you want to be really careful what your fears are. If you fear bad health, if you fear death, these are things that you could be drawing uh, to yourself in your life. So you want to really not have that negativity or fear. You want to get that out of your of your thought process. And I'll share with you how to do that, how to change your subconscious beliefs in just a minute. But here's some of my favorite quotes on mindset. Both poverty and riches are the offspring of thought. Both poverty and riches are the offspring of thought. Love that just means that however we think, that is creating um, poverty or riches for us. It, it comes from what we think first. Another quote is, there are no limitations to the mind except those we acknowledge. There are no limitations to the mind except those we acknowledge. That is so true. Our mind is so powerful, so much more powerful than we've ever been taught. And that's one of my goals is to teach you the power of the mind in, in this um, program today. And of course, Henry Ford had one of my favorite quotes, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. I like to modify that a little bit and say, whether you think you can be wealthy or think you can't be wealthy, you're right. Because it really is about whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't. That definitely plays a role. So before I begin talking about this, I really need to set some ground rules with you. I want you to keep an open mind. Please don't go to the negative. Try not to judge what I'm saying. Just keep an open mind and take it all in at first and make a decision at the end what you think about all this. All right. Just keep an open mind. I'm here to help you. I'm here because I want to make a difference in your financial freedom. I want to teach you things that maybe you haven't heard before. Some of this maybe you have heard before, 
but maybe there's some new things here that's going to open your mind and make a difference in your life. And if I just make that difference for one person's life, then I've, I've done the thing I'm here to do. So get rid of thinking I already know that. You know, if you know it, are you using it? Because there's a proverb that says, to know and not to do is to not yet know. So if you're not really doing it in your life, perhaps you really don't know it. So just get rid of that, oh, I already know that thinking. Put what I tell you into action. I really want you to be successful. And if you don't try this, you have a 100% failure rate. So I want you to try, just commit to me, you're going to try the things that I suggest to you. You will do those things that I suggest to you. The exercises, I'm going to give you a couple exercises and tell you some fun ways to change your mindset and cause some things to happen in your life. And I want you to promise that you'll give it a shot. Einstein said, insanity is continuing to do the same thing and expect different results. To me, that means if you want to be wealthy and you're doing the same thing every day, you're going to the same job or you're doing the same business and nothing's changing, how are you going to get different results? In order to make a change, you've got to do something different. So make sure that you're trying something new and different like I'm going to be suggesting to you on this show today. I also want you to give this some time to work because I see that most people quit too soon and they miss success because they give up. They have lack of faith, lack of belief, and they just give up. So I want you to commit to really looking at this and really working on things with your mindset for the next several months. Let's look at four months to really put this into action and really keep working on this. Don't dismiss this because of its simplicity. It is simple. It's not easy, but it is very simple. We make things way too complicated, and it really is much more simple than you might believe. I'm now going to tell you the real reason you don't have what you want in your life, all the money that you want or all the things that you want. Ready? Because there are beliefs in your subconscious that are locking you into your comfort zone, and you don't even realize it. So the reason you don't have everything you want is because there are beliefs in your subconscious that are locking you into your comfort zone and you don't even realize it. Of course, because they're subconscious. Now, again, this can come from your childhood, from what your parents taught you, from life experience. I had one client who uh, made a million dollars in the dot-com bubble and then declared bankruptcy shortly thereafter. Now, what did that teach her about money? It taught her that it might come and go easily. It taught her that it might be hard to keep. It taught her that it might be a bad thing because she ended up in bankruptcy. So think about what experiences you have that are teaching you certain things about money. The media can create fear. It, you know, I have clients that go to sleep listening to a certain news show at night. And on that news show, they talk about murder and all sorts of terrible things. And they're falling asleep to that. So their subconscious is taking in all that negativity. Oh, that is so horrible. Don't do that to yourself. Don't listen to a news station to go to sleep by. All that does is perpetuate fear and anxiety and it just really can put you in a low state. So here are some things I want you to commit to that are small changes that you need to do in order to have the wealth that you want. Number one, decide to be rich. All wealth begins with a decision. It begins with a decision. And I have an interesting example. I was watching television one day and Donald Trump was on and someone in the audience asked him, what would you do if you lost all your money? And it was interesting because Donald did not even want to entertain that thought. He said, I will always be wealthy and that's all there is to it. Next question. So he didn't even want to entertain the thought, what would happen if he lost all his money? Because he knows how powerful the mind is. So the first thing you need to do is decide you want to be rich. The second thing is, believe you are worthy and deserving of wealth. 
Wealthy people aren't any better than you. They might be more focused than you, but they're not better than you. And being worthy and deserving of wealth is something that's really important. I was shocked to hear many women tell me they didn't feel worthy and deserving of wealth. Now, that doesn't mean all women feel that way, but I did run across a fair amount of women who feel that way that it was shocking to me because I never heard about it in the financial world. I never ran across that anywhere, you know, in talking with with clients and people who were investing and I, I never heard that before. But when I got into being a wealth mentor, I certainly did hear people say they didn't feel worthy and deserving of wealth. Well, I'm gonna show you how to turn that around in this show. I also want you to decide that money is important to you. Money is important to you. You know, once in a while I'll hear a spiritual person say, oh, it's not about the money, or I'm not doing this for money, or I don't care about money. Well, let me ask you this. If you were in a marriage and you said, I don't care about my spouse, how long do you think you'd have your spouse around? Exactly. Not very long. So if you're saying, I don't care about money, it's the same thing. I don't care about money. It's not important to me. Well, hmm. You need to change that belief because money's kind of a little bit like air. Like (laughs) you need air to breathe. You need money to live. So it is important to you and make it important to you. That doesn't mean it has to be your God or you has to be, or you worship it. No, no, no. I'm not saying that, but I am saying make it important, make it a priority, make it something that you want in your life. Make that decision you want it in your life. So I have an exercise for you and a little assignment. Uh, And then I'll have another assignment at the end. First of all, I want you to create a wealth journal, a wealth journal. A wealth journal can be a piece of paper, a blank book, a blank computer screen. It can be whatever you want, but it's a place where you write your thoughts about wealth. You write your thoughts about how much wealth you want. You're going to write down uh, some of your goals. You're going to write down perhaps where you're starting with wealth, what you have now. Uh, But in that wealth book, in that wealth journal, I also want you to start writing 100 things you're grateful for. 100 things you're grateful for. Gratitude is where I start everybody when we're talking about wealth and mindset. Because I learned that fear and gratitude cannot exist in your mind at the same time. That means you can't be positive and negative at the same time. And fear is a negative thought. It's a negative emotion. So gratitude is a positive emotion. And since you can't think both at the same time, if you're focused on gratitude, therefore you'll be focused on the positive, which is what I found all millionaires did when I started studying mindset. They started with a positive mindset, positive thinking, but more than that, gratitude. So write down 100 things you're grateful for. Now, most people start out and they say, I'm grateful for my family, my my spouse, my children, my God, my Uh, house, my health, you know, my parents, you know, they they go through a a long list of things. And they're pretty typical things that we all would go through. And then they get to, you know, about number 42. And they say, Oh, you know, it's getting harder to think of things I'm grateful for. But at the same time, I kind of get this. And What I understand is that it's not about how many things I'm grateful for. It's about being grateful for everything I have. And I say, bingo, you got it. That's the exercise. Now, just because I gave you the answer doesn't mean you don't have to do this. I really want you to go and write down 100 things you're grateful for in your wealth journal. So start writing those and see if your mindset doesn't start to shift to gratitude. And if you feel fearful, go to a place of gratitude. That is how you can get out of fear. W. Clement Stone was a very well-to-do man who made a hundred million dollars in the 1900s and he started Success Magazine. What he said was, 
You affect your subconscious mind by verbal repetition. You affect your subconscious mind by verbal repetition. That means that you can say things over and over and over and change your subconscious thoughts. Isn't that how advertising works on television? Isn't that why we listen to all these mindless commercials over and over and over and over again? That's what they're doing. They're changing our subconscious mind by verbal repetition. So I'm going to show you how to create your own advertising to put in positive thoughts that you want to change in your subconscious. And I'll show you that at the end of the show. But it is important to change those subconscious beliefs. That is what's holding you exactly where you are right now. And Think and Grow Rich, the book, talks about the mental side of wealth. It talks about visualization and how important that is. If you were an athlete growing up, you probably have used visualization. I was a swimmer. I competed as a swimmer for, oh gosh, 12 years. And I had an excellent coach in high school. And what he used to say was, you know, visualize yourself going into the turn, doing your flip turn perfectly, coming out ahead of everyone, touching the wall ahead of everyone. He'd have us visualize the whole race in our mind. And professional athletes use this. Before they putt on the golf course, they are visualizing the ball going into the cup. So this is something that uh, basketball players use and football players use and golfers use and all kinds of athletes use visualization. It's very common for athletes to use visualization. Well, why is that? Well, it's because our brain has electromagnetic energy and thoughts are things and you're actually also creating some new neural pathways. But that visualization really helps guide your mind to think about what you want and then direct it to accomplishing what it is you want. So we have electrons, we're all made of molecules, uh, electrons and protons. And it's something that is very interesting because we can be in a frequency And our thoughts become frequencies. And this is something that was very interesting to me done in a scientific experiment uh, called the Intention Experiment with Dr. Lynn McTaggart. She showed that protons uh, with directed thought could actually impact matter that that was miles away. And she proved that our mind affects physical nature. So what she did was she had two leaves from a tree leaf A and leaf B across the country from two groups of people. Uh, So let's say the leaves are on the East Coast and the people are on the West Coast of the United States. And the uh, control group didn't have any thoughts. They weren't told to think anything. And the focus group was to think about a particular leaf. The researchers that were near the leaves didn't know which leaf the group was going to focus on. So the focus group focused on leaf A, and then the researchers did studies of leaf A and leaf B to see if there was any change in the photons or the energy around the leaves. And what they found was there definitely was a marked increase around leaf A, the one that everyone had focused on, and there was no change of energy on leaf B. So it showed that thought and focused thought can affect matter, can affect energy. It is a frequency. And our bodies have frequencies. This is something that people aren't often familiar with, that everything on the planet has a frequency. Even rocks have a frequency. Mammals have a frequency. Men and women have different frequencies. Women are a 0.26. Men are a 0.24. Why is that important? Because in a fire, when they can't have any other distinguishing elements of determining whether it's a man or a woman, they look at the frequency and they tell by testing the frequency whether those are the ashes of a man or a woman. Sorry, that's kind of gruesome, I know. But it's important because I was fascinated to learn that, that men and women even have different frequencies. But everything on the planet has a frequency, which makes sense because we're all just a bunch of molecules that are vibrating and some of us look more solid. Some things look more solid than others and they're vibrating very slowly and other things vibrate very quickly. So depending on what we're looking at, they're in a different state of vibration. 
and frequencies tune into a wavelength. So just like a radio can tune into AM 590 or AM 610 and maybe get a clear signal, but when it tunes into AM 600, it doesn't get a clear signal. Why is that? Well, there's certain frequencies that create clear signals and certain frequencies that don't. And there are frequencies that are beyond what we can even sense. Things like dog whistles, which blow a, a, at a frequency higher than we can hear in our normal range of hearing, or ultraviolet light, which is light beyond what we can perceive. Dr. Masaru Emoto was a researcher who studied vibrational frequencies of words and water, and he had jars of water that he just put a word on a label on the front of the, of the water bottle, water glass, and put it in the freezer and the words that were positive, like love and gratitude, formed perfect, beautiful crystals of water. Beautiful crystals, like snowflakes. And the water that had negative words on the label on the front of it, like hate or murder, did not form any crystalline shapes. So that would be like AM 600, where it doesn't tune in, but the positive words actually tuned into the beautiful crystals. A clear frequency. I find that really fascinating. So how we think and what what our thoughts are, are impacting nature, impacting the physical reality, and our bodies are mostly water. So our thoughts and our beliefs are going to impact the water. Demetrius Patetsis said, the magnetic field of the earth is just strong enough to move the needle of a compass. Signals of the brain are a billionth of that strength. So he's acknowledging that our brain has uh, a field. It has a, a, an energy to it. And that energy and our beliefs are so important to creating what's in our physical reality. There's something called the placebo effect that is so fascinating to me. And I want to share this with you because this blew my mind. The placebo effect is the explanation for how people are cured without uh, actually taking a medication or having a procedure. So for example, uh, we all know about if there's two groups of people and one group was given a drug to do something and the other group was not given a drug to do something, but yet both have the same results, how can that be? Well, it tells us that there's something going on with our belief system and our thoughts that the people don't know whether they had the actual helpful drug or not, but they still had the same beneficial result. That means that there's a power of our thoughts, a power of our mind that's having the same effect as the actual physical form of, you know, what it is they think they're taking that's beneficial. But here's what blew my mind. The placebo effect had never been done for surgery. That's right. They'd never tested surgery with a placebo control group. So (laughs) this was amazing to me. They took people that needed knee surgery and they separated them into two groups. One group would actually have knee surgery. The other group would be taken in to surgery, have an incision, A tape recording would be played of the doctor doing a real surgery with the nurses, with the utensils, clanging, all of that, and then they would sew them up. So in the control group, they actually, or in in the placebo group, they actually had no real surgery. They just had an incision, and then they were sewn up. The results of the two groups after the surgery were the same. They both said they had perfect knee function, no pain anymore. And years later, even they had perfect use of their knee. It was incredible. So what does that tell us? That tells us that our mind impacts physical reality, physical reality. And that is so amazing. There's a doctor named Dr. Joe Dispenza who wrote a book called You Are the Placebo. And it's coming out this month, and I can't wait to read it. And I followed some of his other work, and he talks about mindset and spontaneous healing. And there have been people who have been able to use their mind to have spontaneous healing. It does happen. He has recorded it. It is something he studies, and his book is going to be about that, and I can't wait to read it. 
There's another uh, spiritual writer that, that I've read named Neville Goddard, and he has had some really interesting things to say. This is one of my favorite quotes. If you will not imagine yourself as other than what you are, then you remain as you are. If you do not believe that you are the person you want to be, then you remain as you are. Desire becomes the promise of its own fulfillment. The assumption of the feeling of the wish fulfilled makes the future dream a present fact. I'll say that again. If you will not imagine yourself as other than what you are, then you remain as you are. If you do not believe that you are the person you want to be, then you remain as you are. Desire becomes the promise of its own fulfillment. The assumption of the feeling of the wish fulfilled makes the future dream a present fact. Love that. Oh my gosh, I love that. So he's saying that desiring something is the promise of its own fulfillment. And assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled makes that future come into the present. So it has to be about the feeling and seeing the end result. And that I completely agree with. I call the wealth frequency that energy that happens where you put out the energy and it begins to appear in your reality. And it can take several months for it to appear, but I'm going to share with you a really powerful story about someone who used that thought energy to create $112 million. And this was a story I actually wrote a blog post on. You can go to my website, BeWealthyAndSmart.com and read it. Uh, And it was about a woman who was in the technology field. And she had a brother who was killed by a drunk driver. And he had four children that she wanted to um, raise and she was not able to support them on her own. So she started thinking about what do I want to do in terms of um, money? What kind of money do I want to have? And she chose the number 112 million. That popped into her head and she wrote it down, 112 million. She also wrote it down on a piece of paper under and put it under her pillow. She wrote it on a piece of paper, put it up on the wall. She visualized having 112 million over a four month period of time. She did this morning, noon and night and as often as she could. One day she said she felt like she just knew that her thoughts were coming true. And she happened to notice in the newspaper that the lottery was $112 million that day. She went out, she bought one ticket with the numbers computer generated, went home, checked the paper the next day, she won $112 million. Oh yes, she did. Now, when she felt that change of after visualizing it for several months, I think what was happening was she was actually using repetition to create a new subconscious belief, which had to create a new neural pathway in her brainway for her to believe that thought. And when she connected into that frequency where she believed it to be true, she saw the end result, it then appeared in her life and she just knew it. She came into a knowing, she knew that it would happen. So I love that story. Uh, I think it's so powerful. I also love the story of Jim Carrey, who is the actor who is famous for having written $10 million on a check to himself, dating it three years into the future, and uh, visualizing every day that he had this $10 million, that he would look at the house, he would drive by the house he wanted to buy with it, it was up on a hill with a view, and almost to the exact day, that he wrote on the check. He received an offer for $10 million to star in a movie. I think it was Dumb and Dumber. And he said, my only regret is that I didn't make it shorter than a three-year time horizon. (laughs) He said, I have a crazy belief in my ability to manifest things in my life. And I thought, yes, that's what you need. You need a belief, a belief that you can do it. If you don't think you can do it, you won't. But if you can get yourself to the point of being able to believe you can do it, 
then I believe your mind will help, will cooperate, and you can create things in your reality. Oprah said, create the highest, grandest vision possible for your life because you become what you believe. Our time is up for today, but what we learned today is that wealth is a decision. Start with a decision to be wealthy. Get your wealth journal, make that decision, write it down. Our subconscious beliefs about wealth show up in our lives and they affect what we have or what we don't have. Our thoughts impact and can change our reality. Your thoughts create your life. To change your life, change your thoughts. W. Clement Stone said, you affect your subconscious mind by verbal repetition. You affect your subconscious mind by verbal repetition. So what we're going to do is create your own verbal repetition of your goals and your visualization. So there is a free app called Flipagram. F like Frank, L I P like Peter, A G R A M, Flipagram. And I want you to download Flipagram onto your phone. And with Flipagram, you're able to add some photos. So I want you to add photos that represent achievement of a goal. Now, I don't want you to be in the photo because, again, I don't want you to be looking at a movie screen projecting yourself onto the screen. It should be through your eyes, not through your eyes looking at you. It's through your eyes. So you're looking at the check. I want the picture of the check. Or you're looking at the new house. Uh, It's not you standing in front of the new house. It's you looking at the house. So I want you to have pictures of what it is that you want. I want you to create no more than five things that you want because everything that you add sort of dilutes your vision. So it's better if you can think of one thing and focus on one thing you want, like the 112 million. But if you want multiple things, that's fine. Just don't choose more than five. And create pictures that represent your accomplishment of those things. Then with Flipagram, you're able to actually record your voice to each photograph. So you can say, I am wealthy. I have $112 million, whatever it is. And then you can flip to the next picture and record to that picture. So you can create a a verbal repetition, if you will, of your dreams, goals, desires on Flipagram. So I want you to do that. And if you're eager to do some more work on your wealthy mindset, go over to my website, bewealthyandsmart.com and sign up for 21 days of emails, videos, audios that I've prepared for you to help change your mindset from one of lack to faith. And it's so important because it's really the foundation of everything else that we're doing. So get started with that. Get started removing your limiting beliefs. That's BeWealthyAndSmart.com. So until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.